Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be going through all the recent updates for Warhammer Quest Cursed City. This month, we've seen a ton of articles on the Warhammer community site for the Cursed City, and we've gone through quite a few of them already. We've brought ourselves up to date. We've took a look at Radukar the Wolf. We've seen... Uh, Kritzer, who we thought might be linked to Curse City, but turns out he wasn't directly linked to the game itself, although the background and lore of the Soul Blight Grave Lords is tied into Curse City in some way, and we're going to find out more about that as we get more releases on it. Um, we've also seen the zombies, and they're looking great. Really love those. And also we had a look at the tiles and the environments that are going to bring the Curse City to life. But now we're going to catch up with the articles that have come out most recently. So we'll look at some of the heroes, we'll look at some of the tactics and the kind of mechanics that are involved in the game, and we'll also take a look at how we can use the Cursed City models in other games uh, for Age of Sigmar, and then also see, we're getting tons of vampires, so we'll also take a look at this new vampire that was revealed this week. And again, this one isn't linked directly to the game, but it's all to do with the lore, and it's really interesting. So let's get started, and first we'll take a look at our first hero. So in this article, this was published a couple of weeks ago, and now these articles are coming out closer and closer together, which kind of indicates that we're definitely going to get a release date soon. It has to be. And also, I was checking out on YouTube, there's been like a bunch of videos published already about how to paint these by the Warhammer community or Games Workshop um, YouTube account. So that's really good news. Once they start releasing the videos on how to paint the miniatures, we know that that release date isn't going to be far away. But back to this article, here we go. We've got this guy, this is Octran Glimscry, the Death Scholar who relentlessly pursues the Masters of Ulfincarn. And it says here, the mortal realms are full of foes who were once friends, Sigmar and Agash, Sigmar and Gorka Morka. Sigmar, actually Sigmar just isn't great at keeping friends. Now we have Octran Glimscry, once a friend and colleague of Torgilius the Chamberlain. And we learned about him in some of the previous videos if you want to check those out. And so we've already seen the images. This is the miniature, great looking miniature, really interesting. This bizarre kind of fork tongue thing going on. Just a really great looking miniature that you wouldn't really think would be a hero. So we've got like a little anti-hero kind of thing going on here. So this is really great. I love this. I love the whole aesthetic of Curse City. And this is a really interesting looking miniature. And so let's find out a little bit more about him. It says here, Octran spent many decades delving into the mysteries of the realm of death. Along with Torgilius, he experimented with Gravesand, seeking the secrets of immortality. But the now Chamberlain stole his research and fled to Ulfenkarn. To rub salt into Octran's wounds, his former friend then perfected their work. You might not be able to see it behind his death mask, but Octran is furious. Now Octran has followed his former friend to the Cursed City, and he's going to use his many lifetimes of experience to track down Torgilius. We don't imagine it's to present him with an award for services to science either. So there we go, we've got a little bit of a grudge going on between these characters, and that's going to be great fun playing that out in the game. And so we've got some nice narrative there, playing off one of the heroes against one of the enemies. So that's really cool. And then at the end, it just tells us, As Octran pursues Torgilius and his master Radikar relentlessly through Ulfenkarn, some who fight alongside him privately question whether he means to slay the villains or join them as a lord of undeath. It's best not to turn your back on him, just in case. And so this is great. So this kind of gives us an idea that there's going to be some twists maybe in the game. Uh, I'm really looking forward to finding out more once the game's released. And this is going to be a great miniature and a great fighter to play as a character. Okay, so let's go back and we'll check out the second article, which was about Cleona Zeitengale. This is another one of the heroes and another interesting sculpt. Let's have a quick look at the picture. Some great details here. Really interesting character. I don't know about painting these letters on the sashes. Hope, I'm hoping they're already engraved um, because my freehand skills aren't up to that quite yet. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's all kind of engraved in the miniature. We can just fill it in. 
Uh, but this looks really good. Really great looking model. Another good sculpt. All matching with that aesthetic. And it tells us here that things have been looking bleak in the cursed city over the last couple of weeks as we introduce the depraved scientist Torgilius the Chamberlain, the Deadwalker zombies, and worst of all, Radikar the Wolf. Fortunately, we have a new hero to reveal, and she's bringing the might of Sigmar himself with her. And she's looking good. We've seen the model now, so let's read a little bit about her. And it says, Cleona Zeitengale is a member of the Cult of the Comet and originally came to Ulfenkarn to spread the teachings of her missionary order. The citizens of Ulfenkarn ignored those teachings and continued to disregard the Cometarian cult when they tried to warn of the coming of a great cataclysm. Spoiler alert, the cataclysm came. Of course, Cleona is too classy to say I told you so and is instead mustering all of her energy to clear the curse of the undead. So another interesting character to bring in, another good hero, and it says here, with the ability to summon blasts from the heavens when her anger is roused, she's determined to prove that the power of Sigmar can triumph over the vampiric scions of Nagash. For the sake of the people of Ulfenkarn, we hope that she's right. So there we go, our second hero, really great miniature again, and now let's go on and look at the next article. So we're getting tons, this is really building up. Like the very next day, we got this one about how to use Cursed City models in your games of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. And I'll be doing a video really soon about how we can use these heroes in Warcry. And I'll be putting out some um, ideas of which cards we can use and also talking about how to create your own for them. So that's coming really soon. But now we've met Radikar the Wolf, the, who's the evil vampire overlord of Ulf and Khan. And we met some of the heroes seeking to drive him for the Cursed City. And it says that most of the models that come in the new Warhammer quest box set also have a war scroll for Warhammer Age of Sigmar so they can take their feud beyond the city walls. Here's a sneak peek of some of the favourite rules. So I won't go through the rules here. I'm not familiar with the rules for Age of Sigmar anyway, so I wouldn't even know where to start on that just yet. But this certainly is going to link in with the new models we saw released for the, slow, uh, the Soul Blight Grave Lords. And so they're all kind of linked to the story of the Cursed City and the models really match the aesthetic of those two. So we get a nice image here though of the heroes from Cursed City. And so this is really great to see. So we can look at the ogre, he's looking amazing. And then we've got all the other, we've got Jelson Darek there, the kind of main vampire hunter guy. And then we've got all the others. So these are looking really good. And seeing them here on a kind of battlefield looks awesome. And I guess this will be Perhaps, is this a battle board that you'd play Age of Sigmar on? I'm not sure. Uh, it also looks like the mausoleum set. Uh, so I don't know if this is pictured on the Cursed City tiles. I'm guessing it would be Age of Sigmar battle mat of some kind, you know, going by the topic of this article. But this is great for us to see these now, kind of in action. And I really can't wait to put together a war band of vampire hunters for Warcry. This is going to be really fun. But this is a great article if you're into Age of Sigmar, the game, and you play it. You can have a close look at the fighters if you haven't seen them already. And again, I've done videos on all these fighters, so you can really go back and look look at them in detail if you want to check those out. But you get to see some of their abilities and stats. So this is great news if you want to play them in Age of Sigmar. You're going to get tons of value out of this set. And I think a 60 miniatures included, which is a huge amount. And um, if you've seen the Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress game, the sculpts in there are incredible. I've never played it and I don't have it, but just looking at the pictures and the, just the amount of good looking models you get, I can't wait for this Cursey. It's gonna be so good. This guy's mental, this big beast. And I suspect, or I hope, that uh, the main villain turns into some kind of beast like this. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that happens. But there we go, so this is a great one. Great article, and it's kind of bringing in, giving you more ways to use your, your miniatures from Curse City in other games. So that's great news. And going back, there's even more. It just keeps on coming. We got, uh, just this week, we've had two more articles. Now we're looking at another hero that doesn't come with the game, but if you pick up uh, the book from the Black Library there, then you're going to get the ac uh, access to the card that you could play this model with. So you don't get the model with it, uh, you just get the card. And so let's have a look at what this is all about. And so it says here, the Black Library has a long and noble history of providing tie-ins to Warhammer box games with the new Warhammer 
quest, Cursed City. They're doing this and going a step further. Every English language copy of Cursed City includes the lavish special edition, includes a character card allowing you to play one of the heroes of the novel in your games. So this is going to be an interesting book if you want to pick it up. It's going to give you a lot of background and a great introduction, I imagine, to Cursed City and what it's all about. But it's also introducing these new heroes, new characters, and it wouldn't be too hard to create your own fighter cards for different characters. So if there's other characters in here you'd like to play, I'm sure it wouldn't be difficult to put that together. So this is something I'm pretty much looking forward to as well. I've not read many books. I'm just reading the Warcry one at the moment, and that's really good. Gives you a good kind of little insight into the different war bands. But I think this would be a great read to kick off Curse City and really get into the narrative and lore of it all. But scrolling down, it says here that the character Morval Olbrecht is a battle mage who cares little for those he fights alongside, and the way he plays is perfect for those who want to add a little bit of competition to their cooperative gaming. And the Warhammer Quest is going to be a cooperative game, so it'd be interesting to see how this plays in. But this character here, again, it doesn't come with the book, just the card with the book, but you can pick him up from the set of uh, Battle Wizards for Age of Sigmar, and then you can build this variation of him from that. So, And I guess you could use, again, proxy any wizard kind of figure into this if you wanted to, even from a different game system. If you've got any Dungeons and Dragons wizards or Frostgrave wizards, you could bring them in and proxy them for this guy. So that's no problem. And it says that uh, in the novel, Morval is a wizard who makes his home in the vampire-ruled city of Olfenkarn and studies some of the darker magical arts, such as necromancy. So already we're seeing he's perhaps not that much of a good guy. In the Cursed City game, these magical preferences are represented by Morval's attacks and abilities. He has a melee attack that uses his vicious scythe-bladed staff Grave Bloom. The potent enchantments woven into the weapon mean that damage dealt with it can never be reduced or ignored. Very useful against some of Olfenkarr's more resilient denizens. Morval also has a powerful ranged attack that can use masses of damage to the toughest foes. So I guess taking on a big beast like this, he's going to come in handy. So that's interesting. And it says where Morval really comes into his own is with his special ability, Soul Storm, which allows him to roll a dice for each model on the same board tile, hero and hostile alike. Any critical result causes damage, and damage to friendly f uh, models can trigger Morval's Path to Glory condition and award him inspiration points. So this is interesting. He's actually going to want to damage friendly models too to, to get him along that path to victory. So that's going to be a real fun twist to play in the game too, especially when you're cooperating and then he kind of stabs you in the back with that. That's going to be fun. And then using Morval might not make you many friends among your fellow adventurers, but it's a character for a way to play with loads of opportunity for fun storytelling. And there we are. So yeah, it tells us here we can build this model to represent him from the Cities of Sigmar Arcane Mystic Battle Wizard set. But again, any wizard proxy is going to work. That's no problem. And um, But I think that model fits in, obviously, with Warhammer perfectly. So there we go. And it also tells us the novel itself explores events in Ulfenkarn prior to the adventures of the game. So we can really set ourselves up and get into the story. And it covers when a series of grisly murders occur grisly even by Curse City standards. A band of unlikely heroes, including our antisocial necromancer, gather to investigate. Their journey will take them from the dark alleys of the city's outer districts to the heart of the Ebon Citadel as they tangle with Radikar the Wolf and his court of undead horrors. The story is the perfect way to get a feel for Ulfen Khan before you embark on your own quest there and it'll be available for pre-order soon. So that's pretty cool. So I like how they've got the books with all the background and narrative. Real fun. But this is a great article. And that was released on the 22nd of March. And then on the 23rd, we got another one. But before that, let's take a sneak peek at the new model Monday that was released, which is another vampire. And here we go. This time it's Lady Annika, the thirsty, thirsting blade. And there she is. Great model, great miniature. And they're really going for it on vampires now. So we're getting tons of vampires. With that uh, preview of the Soul Blight Grave Lords, we got so many. And now we're getting this one too. So I don't know when it's going to end. Hopefully we're going to get some vampires for Warcry. A, a, a specific like warband. That would be amazing. And now we've seen it for vampires in Warhammer Quest, Underworlds and Age of Sigmar. 
it just it'd be a shame to leave Warcry out. So let's hope they do that. But this is a great model, and again we can bring her in into Warcry, no problem. And I included her in the video I did yesterday, where I used the Soulblight Grave Lords and built a Warcry Warband from it, and went through all the fighter types. So if you want to check that out, that's on the channel too. And it's not going to give us an awful lot about her here, but um, some great pictures and a good insight. So if this is the taste of things to come, I'm pretty happy. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And let's get back to the Cursed City with the post that came out on the 23rd of March. And again, it's another hero. And this time it's Quilathis the Exile. And in this article, they introduce a new mechanic that means the gang of heroes can become tougher and deadlier as you play through the game's punishing campaign. So that's really interesting. So we can start leveling the fighters up. And as they go through the different levels, their, their levels increase. So that's really fun. And we've seen this miniature too. You can check this out on the previous videos I've done. But she looks awesome. I love this sculpt. Real action. Looks really cool. And it's great to start seeing some of the mechanics now. So as we flick through, it tells us that each of the heroes in Warhammer Quest, Cursed City, fits into one of four classes. And... All of these have six levels, and your fighters begin at level zero. And then from Kualathis card, we'll see she's a Executioner. So they've all got these different traits. And I've not played Warhammer Quest before, so this is new to me. Um, but it's nice to get a good look at the card, and we can kind of take this in and break it down a little bit. They're kind of all on one card as well, everything we need to know. So each fighter's unique abilities, their path to glory, how they can level up, I guess, and all that kind of thing. And it's good to see that they can have items they can carry, armor and weapons. So this is really interesting. I can't wait to get more details about, about this and really looking forward to playing it. Uh, it tells us that executioners are exceptionally mobile killers. And as they reach the higher levels, they can reliably deal damage and evade any retaliation. And Jelson uh, Darok is also an executioner, while Octran Glimscry and Cleona Zeitingale are lawmasters. And then the final two clusters are Blades and Stalwarts. And I guess we'll see those with the other fighters as they're released. But this is great. We get to see the levels and how each time uh, your fighter, which in this case would be the Executioner trait, as they level up, they're going to get extra abilities. And it says they once they go from level 1 to 2, they get to keep level 1 as well. So they kind of these are accumulative abilities that they build up as they play through. So that's really interesting. And there we go. We're getting to the end now. If you're going to see, if you're going to rescue Ulf and Calm, you're going to need a good mix of heroes, all suitably leveled up. Otherwise, the cursed city will def uh, definitely remain cursed. So, really, it's going to be fun to see the other traits and then work in uh, collaboratively to bring all the different fighters together. That's going to be awesome. Real good fun. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how we can do some solo play in this. So that's going to be great until we get the, the game and start playing it and breaking down the rules and, and figuring that out. So really looking forward to that. But again, what do you think of this? Does this remind me a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, um, the Dungeons and Dragons board games where you level up as you play through the different campaigns. So yeah, be interesting to see what this is all about. But really good to see the card. And I think this is now the final article. We're right up to date now. And I'm really excited for this game coming out. I hope you are too. And um, with all these articles getting closer together and with those videos on YouTube showing how to paint the different fighters from this set, I'm sure we're going to get a release date really soon. But I'd love to know what you think. Please join in in the comment section below. Let me know what you like about this game, what you're looking forward to the most. Even include what you don't like, what you think they can improve on. It'd be great to hear your thoughts. If you want to catch up with the other videos I've done on Warhammer Quest, then you'll find those on my channel too. And once the game's released, I'll be ordering it as soon as I can, and then I'll be going through producing painting videos, rules videos, and battle reports. So we'll go through the whole game and introduce it to the channel. If you like content like this, then please consider checking out my Patreon page. It's an awesome community where we hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share all our ideas, what we're up to, help each other out. And it's a great place where you can find content that you're not going to get anywhere else. I'll put a link for that in the description and it'd be awesome to see you there. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you found this interesting and I hope you're as excited as I am for this new game to come out. Uh, so thanks again. 
Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.